Okay guys, so today we're gonna to be doing the valve stem seals on my CRX. We're gonna be uh, doing it in the car. We're not gonna be pulling the head off. We're gonna be using the rope method. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the rope method if you don't have any compressed air. Uh, valve stem seals, we're doing them because it burns a little bit of oil. Uh, usually after idling for a while or after sitting for a while, it burns oil, which is usually indicative of a bad valve stem seal. That also lets a lot of crankcase pressure in. And it's just something we need to fix because when I'm sitting in the Chick-fil-A drive-thru and every time I have to move up two car lengths and I burn a little bit of oil, Kathy in her Denali behind me is worried my car is going to catch fire because it burns oil. And that's kind of embarrassing when I'm trying to get my nuggies. So we're going to change that out today. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. All right, guys, so here's our tools. We're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench to rotate the motor. Uh, you could use a 19 down at the crank pulley, but the I believe it's a 17 at the cam gear. We'll just use that because it's easier. We have a 10 millimeter on a spinny void. Okay, we got a spark plug wrench because we're gonna have to pull the spark plugs out. We have our valve stem seals here, intake and exhaust, and I got some from Super Tech. I've got some of the right stuff. You know what I mean when I say the right stuff, right? Anyway, this is just going to be some silicone when we put the valve cover on, back on, a valve spring compressor, and some rope. Now, consider your lifestyle choices. Make sure you get rope that's small enough to fit inside the spark plug hole, but make sure you get enough if you're a rope bunny also. You can use this for your car and for your bedroom. So, we're going to start with pulling off the spark plug wires so they go... Okay, so next we're gonna take the valve cover off. So all we gotta do is easy. Now I forgot something, I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna disconnect the battery. So that way there's no accidental chance of us turning the motor over. Uh, there really, if, if we have everything disassembled to the point we're gonna get to, there really shouldn't be any damage caused by it. But just to be safe, we're gonna disconnect that. Okay guys, so we got our valve cover off. Um, now we're going to, look at these cams are really clean by the way, I haven't taken them off this car, sorry. Now we're going to take off these bolts here, this guy here, this guy, this guy, this guy, all the way to the end, and this assembly, this rocker assembly will come up. So guys, when we loosen off these uh, rocker covered bolts, we're going to go the opposite order of the torque sequence. You can look at the torque sequence online. Essentially, you start off in the middle of cylinder three, you go front, back, and then et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we're taking this off right now. So the backwards of that for loosening it is starting from the outside and working our way inside. Um, I'm not sure how crucial this is, but it's a good practice that if you're taking something off that is uh, you know, required to be torqued down, when you remove it to remove the least amount of tension, or sorry, to create the least amount of tension as you remove this, it's best practice to loosen it in the backwards sequence of the torque sequence. Now, some cars can be different, and I've seen people just rip these off with no uh, no sequence at all, so I'm not sure how critical it is, but I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna suggest that to you guys. So guys, this is a little scary, but uh, so I went to go loosen some of these. I did this one here. It's already, it's already hand loose. This one felt like it broke too easy, and another, look, that one's not, like, look, like, this one wasn't torqued. This is why you guys use a torque wrench, guys. Eventually, this could have vibrated enough, caused wear, let the cam bow. You need to torque your stuff, guys. You need to torque your stuff. Okay, guys, so all our bolts are loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the bolts in here, though. And that way, we're going to take this guy off. You might need to give it a couple taps with a hammer. I haven't yet, but take a rubber mallet, get it a few taps where it mounts, and then we're going to lift the whole part up, bring it over, and make sure to set it on a soft, clean surface. You don't want to set it on a hard surface that can potentially pick up metal or scratch it up. It's not a mating surface that seals anything, but good practice again. So make sure you guys are set up and ready to lay it down. Okay, so we have this bad boy off. So now coming over here to the engine, there's four oil drain backs. Uh, you're gonna wanna plug them up with something, probably a paper towel like so. And then we're gonna take this four spark plugs out and we're gonna plug up three of them for now. And then we're gonna start doing the rope method on first cylinder. We're gonna just go cylinders one through four. I'm just gonna show you how to do one of them and then I'm gonna off camera do the rest of them for this car. And yeah, so let's go ahead and pull out one of these spark plugs and the rest of them and I'll show you guys how to rotate the motor. Okay guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the motor to bottom dead center. Bottom dead center is when the piston is at the lowest point in the engine before it starts to return upwards. We're gonna do this and verify this 
By putting an extension inside of the spark plug hole, we're gonna rotate the motor via the crankshaft pulley down there. I was gonna do it off the cam gear, but I feel safer doing it off the crankshaft. So we got a 17 millimeter bolt and a ratchet on there, uh, and a 17 millimeter socket. And we're gonna rotate it until it's at bottom dead center. I'm gonna try to demonstrate this for you guys to see. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the bottom dead center, put the rope in, and then crank it until it can't go up anymore, which implies we have pressure up against our valves which is holding them up, then we're safe to remove the whole valve spring. So I'd suggest getting a long socket to put in there. I have a really long one and uh, we're gonna put it in there and then I'm gonna come here down here. I've already got my ratchet on there. No, uh, Hondas rotate counterclockwise. So we're gonna continue rotating it counterclockwise. So set your ratchet to lefty loosey and we'll start turning it. Um, I've seen some people on these D series do it the other way around and running clockwise. Um, but just to be safe, we're gonna run it counterclockwise like the motor was intended to rotate. So if I go here, I'm gonna start turning and you're gonna see the socket move, or this extension, sorry. Uh, let's look at it relative to here. So there it is there. It's going up actually. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit. It's still going up. Okay, I think it's gonna start coming down now. Oh yeah, there we go. So we're going to keep going until it's at its lowest point, just like me in my life right now. Um, keep going, keep going. And once I see a smite, slight change in direction, yeah. Okay, keep going. Oh, is it going to come back up? It's going to rotate the ground. Okay, nothing's moving. Should start. All right, it's coming up here. So now we're gonna put rope in it and then we're gonna keep going until the rope stops any movement. So guys, what you wanna do is you wanna put as much rope as you can physically stuff inside of here. Stuff as much as you can get into the combustion chamber. I can't go anymore. I've got as much rope inside of there as possible. So once you've stuffed as much rope as you can inside of your car, congratulations, you're a disgusting, vile monster. You've introduced your car to rope play. So, Pat yourself on the back for the new kink you learned. You can play with your car. And now we're gonna start turning this crankshaft pulley again until we can't turn it anymore. So I just kept rotated counterclockwise until it couldn't turn anymore. You'll feel, you'll hit a wall. And that's where you wanna kinda of stop turning or else you'll break your crank pulley bolt loose. Let's not go down that avenue. There, you'll have to just retorque it later, but then you'll need a special Honda crank pulley tool. Uh, but for now, uh, I just kept going until I couldn't really turn it anymore with uh, a normal and moderate amount of force applied to my uh, ratchet down over here. So that means, you can also kind of hear the rope compressing. So essentially the, the pistons come up, it's compressed all the rope up against the valves, and now the valves won't fall down when we take out these keepers, because these keepers are keeping, follow me, are keeping the valve from just falling into the combustion chamber. Okay guys, so now we got our valve spring compressor on. And what we're gonna do is we're, we've got it locked onto the springs and then this little teeth right here in the middle, will start compressing it down and we'll just tighten it until it comes out. We're gonna have our hands here ready with a magnet. So that way, oop, oh, I just ruined it. Nice, good job, it seems. But anyway, as we compress, these little keepers here in the center are gonna pop out and the magnet will catch them and we'll pull it out. Once these center keepers are out, then the whole valve system will come out. Okay guys, so we got the valve off. I had to do it off camera just because I needed both of my hands. Um, but now we're gonna take this valve stem seal off. We just wanna take a pair of pliers and kind of work it off a little bit. Uh, be careful not to scratch the valve as it comes up. And just like that, it is off. So it looks like this valve stem seal, you can see a little bit of the rubber right there. So this is definitely bad, definitely bad. So good thing we're changing it. So guys, once you get these on here by hand, Grab a 10 millimeter deep well socket and a rubber mallet and tap it on. You'll, you'll, when you tap it on, you'll hear a difference in the sounds of the taps. It'll have kind of like a hollow sound and then it'll sound like you're hitting something solid. That's how you know it's in all the way. So guys, I wanna kind of demonstrate something. Um, this is what would happen if we were to take the valve springs off and didn't do any method to retain them. See here, this guy moves freely. It falls, see how it falls? It's hitting the rope that we put in here. So that's why I put the rope in. Or you can use compressed air and the compressed air would push it up. So um, a lot of people want compressed air at their house. If you do, I'd probably recommend compressed air. There's benefits and drawbacks. Compressed air, I mean, it's pretty consistent. It'll keep it very high up or like with the rope, I still have some slack here, right? Um, 
But on the other hand, let's say your compressor went out, the line blew off, whatever, mid-process, there's a chance that you lose that air pressure and it can fall down. Not likely, but there's a chance. But whatever method suits you best, but for those that want to attempt this without, without either, would not suggest it because you just drop your valves in the block or in the combustion chamber. So with that said, guys, I'm going to quickly go ahead and do the rest of these valve springs, and then we'll come back and start reinstalling stuff. So guys, I had to go warranty this out because I broke one, and this valve compressor kind of sucks, honestly. So we're just going to put it there for now. Uh, and as you can see here, we're doing open valve surgery on the CRX. Uh, we did something kind of ghetto, but it was kind of smart at the same time. Um, what are you rated as? Ghetto to smart. Uh, uh, smart being a 10, ghetto being a 1. 1 out of 10. <laughs> So Thanks. Low. I'm pretty sure we just hit it with a hammer and nothing else. No, but it worked. That's the thing is like it actually worked. So that valve compressor, we're just struggling to get this valve off here. Um, like that guy was just not compressing at all. So what we did, I think I still have the keepers in here. We took a magnetic spark plug. You can't really see it. Maybe if I can get in the light a little better. So you can see the valve keepers are in there. Both of them got caught. So what we did was we took the socket over it. I'm going to take another socket for demonstration. We took the socket over the valve here and made sure to keep it on there really tight and keep it very intimate against the top of the valve. We smacked it with a hammer until we heard a click and we knew the valve keepers were out. The, we were ready with a magnet and the reason, this is the reason why we have all these towels in case the keepers fell out somewhere, we'd have a higher chance of finding them and not, <laughs> not letting them go in the motor anywhere. And, uh, and they, they, land, they, yeah, they, 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 they landed it in went. the, yeah. I'm stoked on that. So basically, the moral of the story is you can buy the proper tool or you can use a hammer to get the valves off and zip ties to get it back on. Okay, We're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the, uh, the ghetto but not ghetto compression of valves. Um, yeah. So take two zip ties, so here's your valve here, right? And you're gonna kind of feed them through. Also, I know I'm wearing a different shirt than when I started this video. Uh, surprisingly, I'm actually doing this over a period of a couple days because I have a job outside of you. <laughs> make sure to hit that subscribe button and the like button to make sure that uh, I can make this my full-time job. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and feed this through. It's a little bit of a pain. It's not too bad, though, compared to using the other valve tool. So we got one zip tie in there. It's a little easier to feed it through this way, pull it through. Grab your other zip tie, and this one. Oh, you're gonna see what we're gonna do with this one. Kind of gotta use both fingers in there, so we'll show that process. Kind of gotta feed one in through one end. It's like a Chinese finger trap. Get your other finger there, and then now you can push it through without it trying to go to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Break on through. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we do that. Pull it through just like the other one. Now you can use pliers, vice grip, whatever you want. Or if you have a vice like we do here, this is really beneficial having a vice here. Start to compress it. I use a pair of pliers to hold the zip tight because chances are you probably got them oily. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull on it and pull the zip tie. And you're gonna do the other side as well. And then I'm gonna just gonna, I'm gonna work it. I'm gonna kind of Compress, pull the zip tie, compress, pull the zip tie. And you don't need a vise like this, it just makes it way easier. If you have just like a normal hand vise grip or a really good set of pliers or a friend that can hold your pliers, um, that's a good friend to hold your pliers. Yeah, Even true. you're not holding my pliers. <laughs> I'm holding a camera. Get off your phone, <laughs> asshole. No. Sorry. <laughs> Go buy a vice, they're $80 at Harbor Freight. Yes, and it just slipped off. Yeah. That, uh, that might be good enough though. So we're kind of compressed there. You can kind of eyeball if it's good enough. Hmm. Put it on there. You can see how much of the valve sticking out. That's adequate. Yeah, that should work. So then, I'm gonna put this guy in here. Let me go grab the keepers out of that magnet. So you just drop it in there? Nope. <laughs> Did that just happen? <laughs> and it fell through the towels! 
All right, cut, uh, cut. <laughs> Perfect demonstration of this isn't the professional way. That is definitely the ghetto way to do it. Are we gonna still do it? Yes. <laughs> Did I do another, what, 31? 31? Well, how many pounds we got? Four, 16. <laughs> Wow. I'm an engineer by the way. I messed that up. I did another 15 valves with no issues like that. Uh, that was the first one that I'd ever happened on. And this is also the last valve. Anyway, we're gonna get this bad boy on. So they're gonna be careful, SpongeBob. Careful, SpongeBob. You gonna drop it in there, just like that. We compress this valve a little more, we'll put it back in the vice grip, got the zip ties a little tighter. Uh, that should help. I'm gonna put my finger there just in case it happens again. We're gonna drop it in there. And you can kinda, you kinda work it around a little bit. Come on, Batman. And they're in there. You, you know it's in there, but you can't pull the valve off again. So then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my Cuddy Boys. And we're gonna cut the zip ties. And you can just rotate it like that. And just like that, you have completed a valve stem seal service on your Honda. So next what we're gonna do, I'm gonna skip this, we're gonna, but we're gonna torque the uh, cam retainer on. I'll show you guys what the torque procedure is for that. And then we're gonna do a valve adjustment. I'm not gonna go into the valve adjustment, I'm just gonna say you need to do it after doing this because all your tolerances are off. There's plenty of articles on how to do a valve adjustment on your Honda, so I suggest doing that after you do this. Also, one thing that may help you guys is you wanna set cylinder number one to top dead center. Uh, you guys probably don't have an aftermarket cam gear like I do here, but there's gonna be a label that says up and two hash marks. The two hash marks are supposed to be parallel with the uh, surface where the valve cover sits, and then the up is gonna be up. So that just kind of sets you up a little better, so that way you can immediately start adjusting these valves here. So now we're gonna go ahead and torque these bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and put the torque spec and pattern up here right now. But that said, one thing I really suggest you do is don't just torque it and go. I'd say get them all hand tight in the pattern that's recommended by the manufacturer and go through it a few times because you'll notice as you work through it, this guy's gonna start working its way down until it's making intimate contact with the cylinder head. So just go through the pattern. It kind of goes to something like start here, go here, 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 etc., cetera. Um, and then torque it with your torque wrench. I'll have the torque spec up on there as well. Um, and go through, torque it once, then torque it again, and maybe even three times is triple check. Because one thing you'll notice is you'll torque them all down, they'll all click, and you'll come back to where you started, and you'll notice it could take a little more. That's because it's still working down onto that surface. Um, and then after you're doing your valve adjustment, you're going to rotate the motor. I would do it again one more time just to be safe. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, um, and then I'll do the valve adjustment off camera, and we'll fire this bad boy up. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's how you do your valve stem seals on your D16A6. Now this may work for other D16s and some of these methods can work for other Honda engines as well, but I wanna primarily focus this on the D16A6 and maybe the D15. I'm gonna check that procedure real quick. Uh, by the time you read the title, I'll already put the engines this works for. So I hope this is helpful to some of you guys, especially some of those that don't have as many tools or specialty tools to do this job. Hope some of the techniques might help you guys. Um, it's not too bad of a job to do. It's just one of those ones you have to be patient, take your time with, do the job right, and you can make your Honda not burn oil. And it's pretty sweet, right? If this video is helpful to you, make sure to leave a comment down below, hit the like button, make sure to hit subscribe for more Honda content and other content. I also have a BMW A track and I also have a ZA Drift. So if you want some variety in your life, I am your man. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. So anyway, if you like this video, make sure to leave a comment down below, uh, like a button, hit, uh,